All right. Um, great to see you guys. Um, hi, Charles Satora. Hi, William Aarons. Hi, Telemachus. Um, hope you guys are doing well. And here we are in uh, 1916 now. This is amazing. Um, yeah. I've, uh, and uh, it was fun again to uh, do a, a second, uh, you know, my second week of who or uh, what am I in, um, in World War One. So as per usual, great to see you guys. Um, I've got my glasses here. I've got my little notes. Uh, please let me know what you guys have been, uh, been up to. I know that um, a lot of you guys are um, in uh, doing the uh, the mini warm-up uh, challenge, which I guess started on January 1st. Uh, good morning, uh, Meandry Mike. Great to see you. And um, yeah, please let us know what you're up to. And also remember that um, I want to update um, each week, um, like uh, which World War I uh, related games we've been playing. And I'm pretty darn sure that some of you guys, you know, are going to go, oh my gosh, yeah, uh, uh, this is starting to jog my memory. I, I remember playing this game because I'm sure that a lot of you guys have played more than what uh, um, you think you have kind of thing. So maybe, you know, like... Uh, at some point, I don't know if we're going to be doing it today, but um, uh, maybe get to the uh, go to the SBI resource site. Maybe it'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember playing that game and that type of stuff. Because I'd like to also, oh, I just want to start seeing there's some trends and, uh, and everything else. All right. Well, we've got enough people here already. So I'm going to start up with the um, History Heroes trivia, Who or What Am I? And then I'm going to pop in the first, uh, the first clue here. Hold on. And... Uh, like I said, I'm not trying to be, uh, I'm not trying to trick people or, or doing whatever, that type of thing, but uh, just things that may, um, could be, you know, um, just something that I, I found interesting during the week or something that popped up. So there's your first one. I was a general during World War I, and so was my uh, brother. Who am I? And I'll put it in the comments as well. I'm going to get rid of this picture. And I want to make sure that I'm, I'm seeing everything here. Still getting used to this whole format. Oh, by the way, on a side note, I was wearing this. Uh, I was wearing the helmet uh, for about uh, a good two hours uh, today, uh, just and you know doing housework and whatnot. Um, it was neat that I uh, forgot that I was wearing it a few times. But I'll, uh, I'm going to admit that um, yeah, I, I'm a little baby because I was starting to feel neck pain already. So I could just uh, I just imagine how long it must take to uh, for my body, anyways. Um, being 57 years old now, I guess if like, if I had ever like be able to get my body broken into something like that, but I was impressed that, uh, it, you know, that much, just that much weight. And I was like, gosh, my neck is killing me. Okay. So I did put it in there, but I'm going to make sure that I've got, um, I just want to make sure that I don't say what I'm, uh, here and I'll put it in the, uh, and I'll put it in the, uh, the comments as well. And then we're going to go off to, um, and, and there you go. Um, I was a general during World War One, and so was my brother. And it's uh, neat that oh, – here we go. And I wanted to make sure that I wasn't doing the, uh, doing the banner thing. And now we're just going to go off to um, current event newsy type stuff, if you want to call it that. Um, the first one I wanted to go to is, um, uh, yet again, the World War One Museum and Memorial. So I'm going to present the screen. There we go. Oh, yes, I forgot. There's something I wanted to try. Uh, I tried this morning and it seemed to really work well. And that's uh, if I increase the zoom uh, to this, I can kind of and please let me know if you guys can uh, if everything's looking good. Um, but I thought if I increase the um, the web browser to 150 um, percent, you guys should be able to see it a heck of a lot better. Um, so anyways, yeah, I just thought, like I said, yet again, I just want to go quickly over um, some of the stuff that goes on at the World War I Museum and Memorial. Uh, they had this thing. So uh, I registered for it. I don't know what in the world it's about. I don't know if it's about this stuff down here, but it says looking for professional learning in 2024. And I was like, you're darn right I am. So um, I signed up and they said, you know, it's uh, just in a, a few Sundays from now. But I uh, wanted you guys to take a look at this quickly, see if there's anything interesting that you guys um, like are, you know, going, oh, yes. And that's the other thing here is uh, remember that uh, we uh, they had the December uh, mystery picture. And uh, um, I, I thought it was some kind of uh, 
Uh, no, I'll wait till you see. Okay, so here's the January one. You can see that. Um, and that's supposed, so we have to figure out um, what in the world that is. I'm guessing maybe, well, it looks like canvas. So maybe part of a canteen, um, like a stamp from a, can, a canteen bag or something. But wait until you see what the uh, the December picture was. I was like, you got to be joking. Like that, I never in a bazillion years would have got that. So that's what they were showing us on the left. Uh, Charles Latour says, Thursday and Friday, lots of babysitting. Youngest uh, granddaughter is, is fun, yeah. Uh, she, well, I, is that the one that keeps uh, playing around with your stuff, uh, Charles Latour? So anyways, I'm going to give you guys another, um, I'm going to give you another banner. Uh, I mean, another clue. Before the war, I spent time in China as a military instructor. Who am I? And I'll pop that in the um, in the thing as well. I'm going to stop sharing that for a second. And I want to make sure that I'm getting the comments here. So before the war, I spent some time in China as a military instructor. Who am I? I'll put that in here as well. Okay, so it is her. All right. Um, so we'll do that. Oh, yeah, let's go to the, the next little bit of um, the, which I'm calling the pinup guile and guy of the week. And um, I'll pop that in. Hold on here. I got to get to the, uh, I got to get in there. All right. So, and yet again, I'm, I mean, I'm not trying to get some, um, yeah, I'd like to get, uh, well, the reason why I picked this, well, you're going to see, the reason why I picked this person is for the next one. So there you go. Uh, good morning, Crispy Galactic. Great to see you. Um, so here we go. And then I'll pop the, um, I'll pop it in the banners, actually. So that's who, th this is who this person is. And I'll go so you can see a bit more here. Uh, air, air mechanics of the Women's Royal Air Force uh, servicing a rotary aircraft engine. And the gal for today is going to be, I mean, the guy, sorry is this guy sorry i'll i'll change the view temporarily um, boink there we go and then i'll pop him in and this is julius arigi the austrian knight of the air from uh the north of bohemia i think i'm not 100 percent positive but i think he's the he was the second highest uh austro-hungarian ace um in the war as far as i know and hold on i'm gonna see if i can find his plane did I do his plane? No, but I, oh yeah, sorry. I kind of did his plane. So we're gonna get rid of him. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna give you another, um, I'm on the comments here. Uh, yes, I, uh, really uh, nice picks. Uh, I love, I'm glad that uh, meandering uh, Mike a few weeks ago, um, uh, admit, you know, uh, humorously made a comment of, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing some, a bit more nudity or something in the show when we go into, into uh, 1916. And uh, I was like, well, wait a minute here. Maybe I will do a, a, a kind of a thing. And, and it's, yet again, some more interesting stuff to find out, out some stuff here. Okay, I'm going to put in the, uh, another clue for you guys. Um, I'm surprised. I thought maybe somebody would uh, uh, click in quick here. Um, before the work, okay, this one here. No, now I'm worried that, um, worried uh, that someone's going to, uh, there we go. I eventually became general staff officer in the East Asian Expeditionary Force. Who am I? And I'll put that in, in it as well. I was joking. I know Meandering Mike. And the thing is, is that um, it worked. You know what I mean? We've got an extra thing um, to take a look at, which I think, which I think is awesome. I don't know. I'm, I'm happy about it. Um, and I also, yet again, I kind of like this empowerment. I'm sorry, but it's a lot. It mean, uh, I mean, I remember reading earlier in the week of uh, um, um, uh, a woman who was working at a munitions factory in Toronto, I think in Toronto, I'm not really sure. And she was lacquering something and uh, the fumes got caught, uh, ignited uh, from a heater and she had severe burns. And I was thinking, well, is she going to get a medal or something like that? Or uh, no. None of that stuff, I'm pretty darn sure. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to uh, get away from editorializing. Um, so I wanted to put in, did I put it in the, no, I didn't put it in the comments, sorry. So you saw the pinup guy, you saw the pinup gal, so that's great. Coburg, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Crispy Galactic. I think you, you actually, uh, I think you're bang on, man. 
unless that's a close, <laughs> but I don't think it is. Yeah, I think you were uh, trying to help me out here with the the place. Um, so there it is. I'll pop that in um, in the comments as well. And what's the next thing I wanted to uh, go there? We did the pinup guy and the gal. Now we're going to go to the uh, the uh, the um, um, current event type stuff, if you want to call it that, and World War One related. Now I'm not going to say. Well, there's one thing I guess you could say. Sorry, I'm going to go grab some water. Is maybe a slightly self-indulgent in the sense that, um, and it's not really. I also want to help, like show some other people this. There's a YouTube guy. I think I mentioned him before. Um, <clears throat> a Siri. He does like I think it's called like a Syrian props and costumes or something. And this guy does it authentic. And anyways, I want. I'm just going to pop him in quickly. We're just going to take a, like for example. I know like Crispy Galactic. You're into um, into ancient stuff, that type of stuff. So you would like to take a look uh admit uh, potentially this thing here so hold on let me get the um i'm gonna get to the links uh, and um just to show you and I, it's in the links um it's just this guy's amazing uh, it's just incredible he, i mean he's done a one like he's done a full scale um chariot for goodness sakes he's he's made the armor by, like by hand and so on and so forth this guy i mean just Ah, uh, he's like, uh, like just, you know, when I, hold on here, pop it in there. Hold on here. I just wanted you to see a tiny bit. I'm sure he wouldn't be upset uh, about me showing, but I um, wanted you guys to see that. So yeah, that, uh, and it, it's actually the guy on the right there, uh, the guy, uh, the, the helmet is the guy that does the videos, but I uh, wanted you guys to, I don't know, it's just a quickie. Let's see if we can. Impressive. Anyways, I just thought uh, you guys would uh, potentially want to take a look at that. I put it in the little thing. Uh, I'm also going to take a look at the. Okay, I'm going to give you another clue. I was keen for my country to go to war. And I'm going to stop the screen for now. Uh, and when we did, I said, even if we perish over this, it will still have been worth it. Who am I? All right. Uh, Charles Satora, this year I want to pick up Empire at Sunrise from uh, Holland Spiele. Uh, can you let me know a little uh, about that? That would be great. Because um, I don't know anything about that. Um, I don't I don't know what uh, that that's about. So I'd like to know. All right. The next uh, little bit of news, if you want to call it that, is that... Um, uh, here, I'm gonna get back on my thing. God, I'm getting discombobulated today. This is a hit or miss, I guess. Manny Mike says that is World War One in the Pacific. Really? Holy smokes, that would be amazing. Um, the reason being is, um, I don't know. The past few days have been um, wanting to know more about uh, what the heck was going on with Japan and and whatnot in World War One. So I'm assuming this would be. Um, Fingers crossed, uh, some of that type of stuff. That would be kind of neat. Thank you. <laughs> Just so solve that. Thanks, Charles Satora. Um, hold on, I'm going to present the screen. So uh, this is a few, um, and Goody, you guys can see this. At, please let me know if it's too small, too big, or whatever. Um, do we still have it at 150? No. There we go. Why is it always going to do that unless I had to... Um, uh, I re whatever. Let's see if it works. Uh, the reason why I popped this in very quickly is to show you that uh, um, somebody asked a solitaire question um, about this, and um, I've only played the solitaire approximately thirty times. Whoa! Someone has done. Oh, that's amazing. Neato. Um, yeah, this person wanted to know if whether or not uh, the new uh, version of um, Wings for the Baron potentially may have. Um, uh, a, a solo component or a solo bot, but I haven't uh, read this person's uh, reply. Yet. Oh my God. And there's another one after that. <laughs> it just goes on and on. Look at this. It's awesome. Okay. But anyways, I wanted you guys to know that there's some movement or there's some interesting whatever's on the next one. Let's see what I've got. Uh, thank God. I'm not showing you that. So you guys, Oh yeah. I didn't put it in the comments. Sorry. And I keep forgetting that I can highlight your uh, your comments, people. Darn it. Sorry about that. Well, I'm still learning. So I pop right in the comments. 
Okay. And oh my gosh, we're getting we're running out of uh, out of clues, uh, people. Uh, and then hold on here. I'm going to go to the next thing. Is also another game uh, that we've been looking at, and there's been a, quite a bit of movement from the designers uh, talking about this. So let me pop that in. Hold on here. I still see it, and it's at 150 percent. Certainly looks like it. Yep, uh, the uh, 1916 Romania Prelude to Blitzkrieg. The uh, one of the uh, designers has been um, posting some new stuff. Um, looks really nice. Uh, well, as we know, and this is the amazing thing is I think now with my um, uh, that didn't work out very well, did it? No, that's gross. Yeah, that's not as much as as, as good as I thought. Uh, with the hundred, uh, Manny Mike says, "Close that porn window, Chris." Yep. Yeah, oh my gosh. I hope. Hopefully, it's not uh, there. But uh, yeah, you wouldn't. Um, anyways, I wanted you also to get to here because of um, the forums is that they did um, go through quite a bit of what they're talking about, which I thought maybe you guys would uh, like to take a look at later. Uh, just be. Um, uh, it's interesting. To, uh, well, you guys know about uh, uh, some of you guys do know about Knock Paris and all this stuff. Um, um, the uh, the VUCA simulations thing is that it? Um, anyways, they're talking about different types of zones of control here. There's going to be. Uh, it just seemed really interesting. So, I've, like yet again, I mean, we, this game could be a dog when it finally comes out. I doubt very much. Just based on the way they just seem to have been taking so long uh to really work on this it just seems like a really well like it's going to be really well done i hope anyways so there's your next clue uh i often disagree oh that's if this can't if you guys can't get this one i'm gonna freak i mean goodness gracious this has got to be the biggest easiest clue on the planet uh uh charles of course says i need to put that game on my official buy list so i don't forget it again <laughs> all right so there we go and I'll stop the screen for now. Um, so there you go. Uh, so that's it. I often disagreed with two other generals who wished for me to focus our attention in the East. Who am I? And no one said anything yet. Oh, da! kaboom, 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 kaboom. Holy cow, how do you keep doing this mini warm up? You freak me right out. Uh, uh, yeah, it just comes out of nowhere. And uh, he does this twice now. Uh, you're like uh, I don't know what like a secret whatever um, um, a ninja. You're like uh, yeah, you're a trivia ninja. Uh, Eric von Falkenhayn, you did it, man. Well done. And uh, the sixth clue would have been <laughs> I'm just blown away, man. Uh, well done. Holy cow! I was instrumental in what happened at Verdun in uh, 1916, and then we'll go to a quickie picture. Wow, man. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the uh, the banners. Sorry if I got a bit anime, but it just blows me away. You just come out of nowhere, and like I said, kaboink. Um, impressive. Okay, so I wanted to show uh, the picture of what the heck he looks like for some of you guys. Um, yeah, eh? Eric von Falkenhayn. Well, it's not a great picture. Actually, if I put in display options to the width, and that should help. And then I have to present it though. Okay. Window. There. And you guys can kind of see it. Sorry, I've got to get check the comments to make sure it's there. Uh, yeah, he, uh, amazing, Crispy Galactic. Just like I said, he just comes out of nowhere. Um, and there he is, uh, Eric von Falkenhayn. Um, a lot of people, from what I know, did not like him. Um, uh, Meander Merck says, I, uh, I have not heard of this gentleman. Are you serious? Goodness gracious me. Uh, um, speaking of which, though, I think we're going to go to, oh, yes. Now, this one, I think I've, I've mentioned this book or this author several times. Uh, he's that Polish guy that did the logistics thingamajig uh, for the Russo-Japanese War. Uh, he was the one that, well, he did this book. And Ken, uh, I mentioned it a long time ago to Ken. Uh, hold on here. Oh, uh, good morning, uh, Hex to Hex. Great to see you. So I mentioned this. Hopefully, hopefully you're doing well. And please let us know if there's any uh, games that you've played. Oops. 
Uh, there we go. And share this. And then I'm going to make sure that it's at 150%, which it wasn't. There. You can see it now. Hopefully a little bit better. That's probably not great. There we go. Is uh, this one, Is War Now Impossible by uh, uh, Blosh or Block. Uh, Mini Warmut says, I'm happy to have caught your live feed. I missed a couple or a few. I hope you keep uh, the Saturday morning showing going. Uh, thank you very much, Mini Warmut. And uh, I'm hoping that this time adjustment works for you. Um, it yet again was another suggestion by uh, uh, one of us uh, participants, happened to be Meander and Mike, who said, hey, by the way, maybe if you push it a little bit, uh, that'll help for people. And at first I was a little reluctant because I'm not, uh, I don't want to be a whatever, but um, then it was like, uh, wait a minute, you did say it is our live show. So if people want to interact, all the power to them. Uh, you can't see me doing my thumb. Anyways, so this, what I have been doing with this book um, is, because um, I'm not a, I'm not a screen reader, um, so I'll stop this for a sec. You don't have to see this anymore. I'm not a screen reader. So what I've been doing is taking screenshots and then printing them off. It's driving me up the tree. Uh, a year ago, from what I know, I wasn't able to, uh, to get this book. Um, I checked this week. Someone uh, uh, is actually making the book, and they're not doing the OCR thing. They're actually doing proper scan of it, so uh, which I think is great. Uh, it's supposed to arrive tomorrow. I'll take a look at it, and I'll let you guys know if it looks half decent. Because um, I'm telling, I'm almost finished the trench uh, warfare book, and once that's finished, uh, everything uh, this thing will supersede everything. It'll jump the queue on everyone because this one is like. A, just a, 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 an amazing uh, book as far as, well, I, I really want to read it. I mean, this guy was just like, you know, saying basically, essentially saying, if you guys can't, if people can't end the war quickly, um, you're, and also that the fact that um, essentially uh, things have, come, have got to a point now that with the lethality and uh, the mass production of uh, destructive material, um, the odds of you ever being able to defeat somebody on the battlefield uh, and, and win the war are pretty minimal. And odds are you're going to have to crush their, uh, their willingness, their, uh, you know, uh, their ability to fight. And the longer it goes on, the much, much higher chance that your society is going to collapse as well. And, you know, it, and so th you can see why I want to read the book or, or continue on with it. It's like, holy moly, are you kidding me? Like, okay, so this one is, and this is um, about, well, you haven't seen it yet. Hold on. Is about uh, getting into, um, like I said, about trying to figure out. Uh, I'll make sure that we're uh, we are at 150 percent. Great. Uh, just put me aside. Yeah, that's not too bad. Is uh, so I've got that this game upstairs over the top, and I went wait a flip in minutes. Um, this has got the the Brusilov offensive for 1916, and this is uh, one of the things that I want to do right now. We're going to go take a look. Mini Warmut says Verdun was the largest battle in history, right? Uh, it certainly lasted a bloody long time. Um, mini war, uh, uh, I think eight months or something insane. Uh, and from what I know right now, Falkenheim, which is one of the masterminds, uh, meandering Mike, uh, the war to end all wars until the next one, yeah, Jesus H, um, is that um, Falkenheim's idea with Verdun was to target uh, a spot in France where he thought for sure that um, the French would have to defend at all costs. And he picked that spot. And uh, essentially, I think you'll, I mean, there's some other quote or something about trying to bleed the French uh, white, uh, basically. Uh, so he realized this was going to be at, from this point on was going to be a war of attrition and was just amassing an insane amount of artillery uh, to go in, into this concentrated little spot. Remember, talk, uh, we were uh, this is all uh, connecting back and forth. Uh, Mueller Marin says we've all been lucky to, that the big boys have as yet not uh, uh, not been used in war. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. OK, so now we're going to go and stop the screen. 
because I do want to go to show you. Uh, remember, they were saying about, uh, gosh, are we, we're only 25 minutes in. Awesome. Uh, is that uh, 1916? They called it. Um, actually, you know what? We're going to let's present the screen now. I've got to pop it up here. Hold on. This makes a lot more sense. Yes. And we're kind of going, well, if we're going off script, we're going off script. But I wanted you guys to see this. Good. Um, and I'm going to share the window. So this is from uh, Meandering Mike says, yes, Verdun was chosen as a nutrition point, but eventually switched to trying to actually win the battle and they bled themselves instead. Really? Thanks for that. I didn't know. I, I know that it didn't work out as well as they thought uh, in, in, at that point. So that's neat. To, uh, thanks for that. Uh, I mean, this is all the stuff we're going to to get into. Uh, I may have to, uh, we'll go nice. It's super big. Um, I wanted you guys to see this. So this is the stuff. This is from Crowns in the Gutter. Um, one half the page. We'll go to the other side. I just wanted to show you some of the stuff that um, uh, Ted Racer uh, highlights in the book and some of the stuff that's coming up this year. And uh, we get to take a look at it. Uh, things that other things, there's your Verdun. Uh, thing is um, is uh, I don't know, the Easter uh, Irish Easter Rising and remember uh, they just started conscription uh, the British just kicked that into high gear and there's like you know um, what they call it the I can't remember uh, the whatever look uh, it's just horrible a eh? fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth battles of the Asanzo Jesus H Christ but there's there's stuff here I don't have a flipping clue about, and we're gonna find out, which is just awesome. Major battles occur on every front. The lines scarcely move, but seven million men are lost. William Aaron says, "I mourn for those men born in my grandfather's birth year of 1896 on both sides of the trenches." You're darn right, and it's just it's just circumstance, man. Just circumstance. Look at all this stuff. That's about like we're just in it, like, and hopefully we'll find out about all of this. So this is what one another thing yet about going into game related stuff. Hold on here is to go to and I didn't finish them off, did I? Nope. So we'll go to the first one. Is I wanted to take a look at uh, good. You can see it still. Is I wanted to take a look at uh, which uh, just like we did last year in uh, for 1915 is to take a look at which. Um, scenarios um, in Der Weltkrieg are specifically start in, well, for the, now, now we're in 1916, so I wanted to take a quick look. And there's nine of them, holy moly. And I tried to pop them in uh, chronological order for you. Um, also, if you guys know of any games that uh, specifically occur in 1916, it would be neat, as well as if there are any that are like uh, of this one, I'd like to compare them and see if like, uh, actually, this one, uh, that game is a, f a better representation or, or whatever. Yander Max says, I picked up a copy of the game Suez 1916 this week. Awesome. Uh, I was uh, going to mention that uh, um, uh, that game um, as well because I'm not sure if it's uh, in uh, if it's in one of these things. I don't know. Uh, it would be kind of neat to see. So there's the first one. Oops, what the hell are you? Oh, that's right. Hold on here. I got to go to... Uh, I didn't put them in order. There we go. So there's the other one. There's the second one. Uh, you can see that the Calfas uh, Cefesi. I don't know if that's how you say it, but uh, there we go. That, so that there's a second one. And then the third one, there's your Verdun um, uh, mini warm-up and, and meandering mic. And you can see here, it says the Battle of Verdun actually lasted into December of 1916. This scenario covers the first period when Patin was in charge of French defenses. Okay. And then we got the Brusilov offensive, uh, which I, I don't know very much about, um, except it's interesting to see here about the wide scope and the limited scope bit. I do know the tiny, tiny bit I know about this is that uh, Brusilov, yeah, he, uh, uh, he did his thing on his on his uh, long front or whatever he had for his army, but the other ones did not do what he did. And uh, I think it's yet again they ran out of logistical steam, as per flipping usual. And there's the psalm. So and hold on, yeah. I mean, there's just and remember, I mean, these are just uh, the nine battles that Dervokrieg specifically mentions. 
um, and there's the Italian front. So, and we saw there was like a four trillion. Um, oh my gosh! Um, uh, because I may not remember to talk about it. I did uh, pop in a few things here. I think it was like flamethrowers we're going to see this year. I was really shocked to find out that uh, tanks are going to be popping up at some point. I, I was like, what? 1916? I had no clue. Um, what else? Uh, multiple front attacks. Uh, remember Hex to Hex, you were uh, wanting to talk about uh, how other fronts are affect, affect, you know, this front is affecting the other fronts and so on and so forth. Um, if I remember the war committee people, uh, they, you know, talk about brashness. Uh, there's, uh, so now we're getting into the Balkans here and, and, um, and whatnot is, uh, uh, that the war committee or whatever the heck it is, um, uh, is that, uh, I think they had it in Salonica and one of the things they've decided to do come, uh, come 1916 against the central powers is to have far more coordination. Manry Mike says British Mark one in September, 1916. Thanks man. Um, is, uh, do you know what battle I was in? If, if they, I'm assuming they must've popped it into a battle um, is that um, one of their main focuses this time is to have coordinated attacks uh, simultaneously on all fronts to cause uh, the central powers as much uh, uh, problems as possible. In other words, they can't just cut, start shifting troops here, there, and everywhere. Uh, so they're really starting to learn. Uh, remember, there's been a lot of moving parts that way and a lot of ego and a lot of this, that, and the other thing. Uh, damn it, we probably, thank you, Manny and Mike, the song, uh, is that, uh, shit well you know, i'll go to there's just so much to talk about um and then the albanian front i would he mentions this is not really that's why you can even see it says here turn two of august is kind of like insert here kind of thing of a uh uh for one of the battles and then the final one is uh romania is going to enter the war so if you guys know of any uh like i said i'm going to try and play um at some point that bruce Ilov, i've had a hankering for playing uh what i call like an afternoon with a buddy type game not like super heavy or whatever and i think that one upstairs would be interesting um the over the top uh thing from the de uh, decision games that'd be neat um so it'll be neat to see um uh, hex to hex and everybody else uh how this plays out with these coordinated attacks but uh, yet again, uh, and then we're gonna. Uh, I think we should go off into the into the the war summary just to make sure I don't um, get too sidetracked. But there's so much to talk about. Is that um, the attacks right now that the Russians are doing? Supposedly, that is, and I think we're actually going to uh, see it in the war summary or whatever, is to help out uh, the rest of the Allies uh, fortify their position in Salonika. So there you go. Uh, you know what I mean? Like tit for tat thing, as well as uh, some other examples. Uh, uh, remember when German West, uh, Southwest Africa finally is settled for the, uh, for the Brits, they're able to, I think, uh, what, uh, grab General Smuts or whatever and bring him on over to attack, uh, to deal with Leto Vorbeck. Um, Meandering Mike could probably know more know, know more about that than I would. Um, that type of stuff. So you can, and then, you know, um, yeah, um, once they were able to deal with that, they started to be able to, you know, shift up troops. Oh gosh. Uh, yeah, we definitely have to get to the war summary. Um, and please, if you guys find, I find it, I feel a bit awkward reading it out, but uh, I don't know how else to transmit it. Um, and there's some juicy bits in, in, uh, this week's war summary. I was just like, uh, my eyeballs are popping out of my head uh, a few times. I was just like, whoa. Okay, maybe we'll do that right off the bat. Um, uh, I will say very quickly, we don't need to go to the website, but uh, I, I think I did mention that I have found a German newspaper database. Um, I just um, haven't had, I just haven't uh, uh, devoted any time on it, uh, which sucks. Um, then we're going to go because I, I want to pop in a couple of teasers. I'm going to call them teasers of the week for next week. Uh, and I'm hoping to God that Harold Bosma is back because if he's not back, I think maybe we'll, we'll wait. Even though he may not be in the trenches, he just made one comment once. And I'm like, now he's Mr. Trench. 
Um, Myanmar Mike says, uh, Jan Smuts had fought in the Boer War. Thank you. And please let me know if uh, there's something about, I know that when German, oh, there's the other thing. Professor Latora, I got this written down and I forgot to mention it. Uh, you started it uh, last week with your little uh, off the side trivia question. So um, uh, I'll give you, I'll give you an off uh, week this week. I'll let you off the hook this week. But next week, um, I, I'm expecting um, you to give us um, a little uh, head scratcher uh, question from Professor Latora. That would be sweet. So continue, please. Um, is the tease. Let's go to the tease. So I saw this because I was going through uh, my books trying to figure out, like, you know, like about going into uh, 1916. And I was like, are you kidding me? Look at this. Uh, Meandering Mike has this book. This is the uh, uh, the chronology, World War One chronology, Martin Gilbert's book there. But uh, I thought, oh boy, let's take a look at this. It, it, even connection with the 660 pounds per yard to wipe out uh, of, of shell, like artillery shell that the Brits figured this out. So I thought, hey man, let's... Um, this is the kind of crazy nonsense that uh, uh, these guys are going to have to deal with. Um, and here's the other one, an allied attack, the risks. So I thought, oh boy, let's start getting into this, start getting into this as we start preparing, uh, getting into the actual battles. Here's the other thing I wanted to mention that uh, we're uh, about the flamethrowers and all that other stuff is that we're going to start seeing our first uh, stormtroopers of some form. And I've knocked my, uh, I was surprised to hear that um, uh, the first people that seem to actually be getting, uh, developing infiltration tactics are the Russians. So they're actually, uh, uh, Crispy Galactic is enjoying this. Charles of says, okay, after Romania declared war on Austria-Hungary, where did they invade first, you little brat? You're, um, well, I can't answer that. <laughs> Someone's going to have to, please. And here's the third tease. Um, is uh, this is a book, um, this book, uh, one of the other books that I'm reading. Remember, I mean, there's, I, I'm probably like you guys, there's some books I read cover to cover, and other one, ones I'm just gonna, you know, hop them around. This one, one is hopping around. But it's this bit, uh, it's because they're talking a lot about uh, diplomatic whatnots, and I had no clue that uh, this was happening. That, but, you know, at the beginning of, this is in January of 1916, that Wilson is sending uh, one of his guys off here uh, to go, uh, uh, Colonel House, actually, to go and uh, talk. Charles Latoura says, and what were the first two big towns they took? Jeez. Um, wasn't that Plan Z, Meandering Mike says, or Plan Z, I guess, for you guys. Um, is that here? So I don't know, Meandering Mike. Uh, uh, this is all new to me. I did no idea that uh, uh, they were trying to propose this. And I'm like, I mean, you can see, I mean, if they were going to show this to the Germans, I mean, I would have been like, screw you. I mean, come on. <laughs> by the way, what, like what? Oh, and by the way, we're going to, and you're going to give Constantinople to Russia. That was the eye opener to me. I was like, you've got to be joking. Okay, let's go to the uh, the war thing. Okay, hold on. And I'll, I'll read it out a little bit, I hope. All right, you guys can see that. Goody. Uh, the Russians are not waiting till the spring to launch their new offensive on the Eastern Front. Their attacks upon the Austrian positions in Bessarabia continue and dispatches are coming through indicating another important concentration of Russian troops near Tarnopol in Galicia. By the way, Tarnopol uh, uh, robs mums, some kind of relative anyways is from there, for an advance in the direction of Lemberg. The troops thus being used are doubtless a part of the large army assembled at Reni, at Odessa, and at other points in southwestern Russia to take part in the invasion of Bulgaria. This was neat. I found this really neat. Mandarin Mike says, wow, it was Falkenhayn that responded to the Romanian incursion. Uh, yeah, I think he got turfed at, uh, well, at, well, we were mentioning that. He, he was coming to blows with uh, Hindenburg and Ludendorff. And... Um, uh, so they kept whining to the Kaiser and, um, and also Falkenhayn from what I know, uh, was disliked by a ton of people. And, uh, so see ya. 
as soon as I guess they gave him the, um, uh, I guess uh, they were maybe the best opportunity, maybe Verdun wasn't going as well as expected, uh, Charles Latour says. Um, uh, the, this one blew me away. The refusal of Romania's consent to the passage of her territory uh, en route checkmated the Russian move, and the troops originally destined for the Balkans are now being thrown in into the valleys of the Dniester and the Pruth. The Austrians and Germans are preparing to meet this new menace by withdrawing from Macedonia, leaving the Bulgars and Turks to face the Allied army gathered at Salonika. The Russian armies now drilling and in process of equipment in central Russia should be in the field before March when the winter breakup comes. The German and Austrian forces on the Eastern Front will have to be reinforced greatly to meet the Russian advance. From Petrograd, statements have been received lately indicated that at least 4 million well-armed and well-equipped Russians will be available at the front. The highest estimate of the German and Austrian troops now in the trenches between the Gulf of Riga and the Romanian frontier is 1.8 million men, and it will require a very great effort on the raking up of all the half-trained Landstrom in the interior of both Germany and Austria to bring this total up to 2.5 million. Great events are due on the Eastern Front before the advent of spring. Uh, Charles Latour says he forced the Vulcan Pass into Romania. Cool, I, and this is all stuff. Uh, thanks, guys. I my oh God, we're all. This is all just waiting around the corner, isn't it? Uh, a new development in the campaign of the Allies against Turkey is foreshadowed in the landing of French troops at Castelarizzo, a small island off the southern coast of Asia Minor, midway between. I think that's where the yeah. Well, I think we're going to find out about the Greeks freaking out over that. Um, Charles Latour says, okay, two towns, uh, Kronstadt and Hermannstadt. Um, Cyprus and Rhodes, a London dispatch says that Greece, which was in occupation until the French landed and took possession, has been informed by Great Britain that the island is to be used as a base for new operations against the Turkish province of Adala or Adalia. Uh, the Greeks have protested. It is not at all probable that a serious attempt is to be made to penetrate the interior of um, uh, Brian R. Smith, uh, Transylvania through the Carpathian Mountains. Oh, nice one. And, and great to see you. Uh, I hope you're having a great day. Um, the Greeks have uh, protested. It is not at all probable that a serious attempt is to be is to be made to penetrate the interior of Asia Minor from a base at Castellorizzo. The great and difficult mountain range of the Taurus is immediately to the north, and the railway from Constantinople to Syria lies far back in the interior behind Taurus. There are several points farther east along the coast where the Allies could more, far more effectively operate. Were they seeking to cut communication between Constantinople and Egypt? The probability is that the island has been seized for naval rather than military purposes. Uh, Charles Latouris says, okay, bruh. Uh, Brasov and Sibiu. Uh, McMurray, uh, great to see you, uh, and, and great to see you kind of live in a, you know, in a weird way. Um, uh, and I hope you're having a great, uh, a great time. Uh, the great increase of insurance rates. Oh man, did I love reading this? Did I love reading this? Because I was like, oh my, wow, this is so much of what I want to do with an unrestricted, uh, submarine warfare in the Mediterranean for my game, for crying out loud. I was like, oh, my God. Uh, the great increase of insurance rates on traffic through the Suez Canal has as its object the keeping of Allied shipping out of the Mediterranean rather than out of the canal itself. German submarines based upon a, uh, upon Adalia or Adala uh, or some other Turkish port on the southern coast of Asia Minor could reach the mouth of the canal after a run of submerged of less than 36 hours. The more modern submarines with 18 to 20 knot surface speed and 10 to 12 submerged. I do find it interesting, uh, McMurray, that um, that uh, oh, here we are starting to talk about naval stuff, and you just pop up, uh, pop on, just out of out of nowhere. I just find this really interesting. Um, German uh The more modern submarines with 18 to 20 knot surface speed and 10 to 12 submerged have a wide cruising radius in the eastern Mediterranean and will continue to take toll of shipping to a large extent. The new insurance rates uh, will send the bulk of the mercantile shipping passing between Europe and the Orient around the Cape. Uh-huh. 
and so lessen the number of victims of German and Austrian submarine activity by taking them twice as long and a ton of money. If the war should be prolonged, the Eastern Mediterranean will have to be patrolled and guarded by nets against enemy submarines, as are the North Sea and English Channel. Mandarin Mike says, I am operating only on two hours of sleep. I was doing my struggle for Zorn unboxing last night. Good Lord, man. Um, from a trooper, dude. Uh, from a Dutch source comes the statement that British monitors continue to bombard the German batteries along the Belgian coast. So persistent have been these attacks at West End that the Germans there are kept in perpetual fear of the Allies landing troops there in the nighttime. By doing so, they would turn the German defensive line along the Yasser. The French Midnight Report deals entirely with artillery activity at various points along the front. Uh, McMurray says, big feel, man, you got this. Uh, uh, the two German munition depots were destroyed in Artois and the Valley of the Oys, and another in the Vosch. The loss in the last mentioned explosion must have been very great. The report says of it, one of our shells caused in the wood to the northeast of Mulbach Valley of the effect uh, five successive and powerful detonations. From the Dardanelles comes an official French report of great artillery activity on both sides on Tuesday and Wednesday. The Turks shelled the trenches at Shell Ul Bar while a French cruiser hammered the Turkish batteries on the Asian coast. We're almost finished. Uh, the Italian occupation of the Albanian seaboard progresses normally. It is stated that Durazzo, the much sought, much sought seaport by which Serbia hoped to come into touch with the outer world, is now held by the Italians. Durazzo must be used extensively for the re-equipment of the Serbian army, and in this connection, great quantities of supplies will have to be landed there. The Austrians, hoping to smash the Allies' stores, sent out a squadron from Kataro, a port a short, up, a short way up the Adriatic, to bombard Durazzo. Um, man, and I said, oh my God, when you said, good Lord, man, you sounded exactly like my brother-in-law. <laughs> uh, Charles Latora, March, April, 1916, Battle of Lake Nark. The attack, which did not do anything, was done to relieve, hopefully, pressure on the Allies at Verdun. And here you are talking, you're, you're making another example of uh, uh, other fronts, you know, ages away having an effect on someone else. Just amazing. Uh, the vessels were attacked shortly after reaching Durazzo by an, al an allied squadron and two Austrian destroyers, the Lika and the Triglav, were sunk, the former a French official says, by coming into contact with the mine, the latter by gunfire. The remaining Austrian ships fled toward Kutaro. The Italian Navy is amply strong enough to protect Avlona and Durazzo and to, and to convoy troops and supplies across the narrow waters of the Adriatic. Operations in the Tyrolean Alps continue, and Italian officials report announce the repulse of repeated Austrian infantry attacks in the Ligurian Valley and uh, the Colonel de la region, I guess. Um, here's some more uh, neat things here. Uh, great aerial activity is recorded in the British official report of operations in France and Belgium. 16 British airplanes attacked Comines Railway Station bombing the sheds, line, and station buildings. Ten machines attacked the German aerodrome at Hervilly, damaging it considerably. All returned safely. There's one up here. You're gonna. It's, I'm like, man, did, or you must be good. Uh, there were 12 encounters during the day with hostile airplanes. In one, oh, here it is. In one case, a British machine, which was attacked by four German airplanes, brought down one, damaged another, and drove off the other two. Holy moly! Uh, and another British airplane brought down two hostile machines. Near Freikor on Wednesday night, the Germans shelled British trenches heavily, and a few German infantrymen penetrated the French front trench but were driven out. And then a final, tiny little bit here. The British occupation of Orfana, a small port on the eastern side of the Gulf of Contessa, is not likely to be followed by a penetration of the region to the north. The troops there will really form an outpost of the Salonika garrison, guarding it against a Bulgar or Turkish advance along the coast. Woof. Uh, <sighs> that was a long read. Um, man, what else What else can I yibber yabber about? Well, I'm not doing bad. There's only about 10 minutes left. And I think I've more or less finished. Um, like I can go back on to the other stuff. Oh, I do want to, I will pop this in. If you guys know of any, I'm not, um, not a uh, big, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm not a big um, 
uh, audio book person. I've only read uh, or listened to, uh, I tried to listen to the Prit Buttar's um, Collision of Empires book. Uh, the narrator I thought was really good. Uh, I just, I don't know if I'm a big fan of Prit Buttar's uh, writing style at this moment in time. So I, 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 I stop doing that. And uh, the, uh, it, it's, it, that's the thing with narration. Anyways, I found a wonderful one for Sun Tzu. It's actually two narrators. One's doing uh, like all, all the off bits she's doing, like, you know, this king said this or whatever. But the other guy's getting right into it. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I popped it in the links. Um, if you guys know of any um, good uh, military, uh, um, obviously World War One related, I'm not, you know, let's be honest here. Um, please let me know and pop them in the and pop them in the comments or somewhere uh, like just leave a bloody something in my on my channel so that way we can uh, tell other people and go okay this is a this is a good audiobook i really enjoyed this one uh, i would love to know uh charles of Taurus says all my info uh is from an encyclopedia of world history 1948 cool oh my god i would love to have some uh big ass uh hard copy uh encyclopedias again i'm not in like i said i'm just not into the online stuff um okay we did that we did that did that i want to make sure that um mcmurray says got to run but it was great to catch up some of the stream wardrobe listens to a bunch of audio books you might be able to help out thank you mcmurray and have a great day um and wonderful to see you uh i've done the teases i've done that da, 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 da. um didn't do i did that oh well, i might as well show you this um since we're kind of running out of whatever I'm not, I haven't uh, said anything. I'm just going to make sure I can get rid of the, I can get rid of the pinups and get rid of the week, I think. Yep. Did I do the week? Did we even go through the week? No, we didn't do that. So I'm going to show you the week. So we just did that. And then I'll show you that. Oh, goodness gracious. Hold on, guys. So this is from the chronology book. Also, um, guys, is that, uh, oh, wait, why, why are you doing that, silly bunny? Is, uh, Robert Massey's Castle of Steel is a great audiobook. Thank you, uh, Brian R. Smith. Um, and oh, actually, I'm going to do this. Actually, I said it out loud. So it's just because the thing that sucks. Oh, actually, hold on. I'll show it. Thanks. Uh, there we go. Uh, is that um, it, it takes a, a day. For, I, I'm not able to watch, uh, take a look at the, uh, the comments, which is uh, irritating. So I wanted to show you this one. We're just going to, I'm not going to read these ones out. I'm just going to just show them to you quickly. So this is what was in the chronology book uh, that I, I popped in here. It's just nice sometimes to take a look at what was, uh, it would have been nice to very quickly uh, go and take a look at some of the headlines in the newspaper and the globe. It, uh, some of the stuff is fascinating. Uh, Charles Latour says, there are newer, more complete versions of, uh, out there. Editor William L. Uh, Langer. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll just, uh, just quickly take a look. Um, I'm not going to read them out, but it's also nice to take a look and see there's that place again, uh, the the mountain area there in Alsash that almost impossible to, well, for me to, whatever. There's that, uh, the anti-ally press campaign about um, what's going on in Salonika that, you know, the allies are doing whatever they want. There's the military service bill. I'm wondering later on if this is going to have anything to do with the, um, uh, the Irish, uh, uh, the, that uh, Easter uprising thing they're calling it. I don't know. It'll be neat to, to find out about. Okay, so I did that. Um, I did want to show you this. Why not? Is It's called the Cannon Bomb. Uh, Miani Mike says, how do you properly pronounce Vosh? I don't know. Uh, uh, I know I've heard Vosh, Vosh. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I don't know. And Oh my gosh, man, Mike, why did I not do this? It's been ages. I've got to run, uh, go and talk to that person. Uh, um, uh, the French guy who lives in Poland there, the Volchak uh, TV or whatever. Remember, I had mentioned to him, uh, I'd mentioned to you way back when that I had asked uh, to uh, call it something like say what or whatever and get people to, and why not? We seem to get be getting enough people and, and seem to be scratching our heads enough times is, uh, uh, asking maybe even ahead of time. And um, I don't know if the person would even do a segment. That would be kind of neat. Um, is getting people to say, hey, how the hell do you pronounce this? I've got this on my Mac or whatever in a game and be able to uh, have this person uh, 
I think it'd be great. Um, so you know what? I'll get on the horn. It's been, uh, he was extremely receptive. I just didn't follow through with it at the time. I was kind of like, uh, I just don't have time for this. So I'm going to uh, hide it. Uh, Manny Mix is a French whoosh. Uh, perhaps I, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm going to pop this here is. Oh, I got the wrong one, didn't I? Turn it. I thought I had it here. Okay. Yeah. Edit. Copy. Boink. Is um, Tenenbaum. I got to see if I can, uh, if it'll let me translate to English. Boink. And it did. Yep. And I got to present though, so you guys can actually see the gold iron thing. Is that thing. Is, uh, it? I guess it was uh, right after the Franco-Prussian War where the Germans were like, Holy smokes. Uh, yes, the yes is silent. Thank you, uh, Brian R. Smith. Um, is that, uh, so this was called uh, the cannon, well, unofficially, but uh, the cannon rail or the, or whatever. And I'll pop you on to, so you can see it if you want to go and find out a bit more about it later. Um, I just thought uh, really neat that uh, they were cluing in pretty darn quick that uh, how important rail was. So if you guys wanted to see that, I was like, wow, this is really neat, uh, neat to see. Uh, and Manny Mike says, thanks, Brian. You're darn right. Um, and this as well, this knocked my, uh, maybe you guys would know about this. Uh, oh, gosh, I'm not doing bad. When I take a look at more of my uh, stuff that I had here, I forgot about all the extra bits, is um, did you guys know uh, that show? I remember reading this a few weeks ago in one of the Globe headlines or articles, and they used the word shell shock or the term shell shock. And I was, well, sorry, uh, pardon the pun, but I was surprised. And the, I thought it was not used for years and years and years, but uh, it was used by 1915. I'm really surprised. This knocked my socks off. I didn't know about this here, that uh, shell shock has been linked to biological brain damage, such as concussions and micro tearing other brain tissues and then uh, talking about artillery fire and so on and so I, you know, all these things. Uh, did you guys know about, uh, well, I inadvertently found out about it. Uh, I didn't believe them. Actually, I even said no. Uh, it, and I haven't been on their show in ages. Uh, the Compass uh, Town Hall thing, the Bob. And uh, I, they were saying, no, oh, things that we were going to see. Manny Mike says, yes, it was a contemporary term of the war. Uh, yeah, and I'm surprised, uh, Manny Mike. Like I said, I did not know that. I thought the term shell shock came after. I thought they were kind of like, no, no, no. We don't, not even going to admit it exists. Um, so I'm on uh, the Compass Town Hall thing, and they were saying, you know, things you would like to see from our company. And I just, I, like I said, I haven't been on there in ages. I don't know why the hell it popped on probably missing talking or interacting with gamers. And um, I mentioned to them, I said, boy, I'd love to see you guys buy uh, the property from Excalibur Games uh, so you can do the Spence and Gable games upright. And then uh, the owner, I don't know, a bill something or other, uh, says, um, oh, decision bought them. And I was like, what the hell is he talking about? And then I get the survey email this week uh, from Decision Games about, you know, what box games would you like to see? And way down, they don't, they spell it the right way. They don't spell it. Uh, no, they spell it the wrong way because they're not spelled, built on us. Thank you, Miami Mike. Uh, they, Decision Games spelt it the wrong way because this is the right way to spell that game, even though they're spelling Tannenberg wrong. Tough. Um, so, Decision Games now has uh, this uh, this bit, which I was uh, really surprised about. All right, uh, 11.58, we're good. I'm going to pop you on one more link, and then I'm just going to say goodbye to you, and hopefully you guys have a great old time uh, this week. And uh, please let me know uh, more stuff of what you would like, uh, things you want to see or whatever. I, I showed you about the teaser bit, so I want to start going off into that. Is this... Uh, well, no, I just thought maybe you guys would want to see this. So I donated my game. Oh, you haven't seen it yet. Or did you? You have seen it. Good. Is, um, yeah, uh, he, well, he didn't donate at all, but he's donated a significant number of, it, of his uh, games. And I thought maybe you guys would be interested on a side note, which I thought was kind of cool afterwards, because let's be honest, uh, anybody who knows him, uh, I was thinking, oh, maybe Meandering Mike is now uh, 
the top person for most games in his in his collection. Uh, yeah, Manny Mike, and uh, I thought it was so nice that he brought it to a library. Like he, like people are uh, are going to be able to to have it. Like right on, like good on him. Um, so there, but I just thought a little side, you know, uh, kind of like a, a bit funny was that the fact that uh, Mandarin Mike now may actually be the person of the world's uh, most case, <laughs> or you're going to be awfully close. That's for sure. Because your top guy just got knocked, uh, just, uh, just uh, retired from having the most uh, stuff. Okay. That's it guys. Um, I felt a bit wonky. I'll be honest with you uh, on this uh, live stream. A bit wobbly, but I mean, you know, hit and miss some days. Um, that's it. I'll, uh, this week, well, yet again, I'll go through the whatever's, but like I said, if there's things that you are like, uh, eh, this isn't working or I would like to see more that you have to let me know because it's your show. Uh, that's, uh, that's it. Um, I hope you guys have a great time. Uh, please let me know if you've played any games, uh, world war one related games and we can go to, uh, do that. Uh, uh, there William, William Mary says our wolf has a lot as well. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, I think I'm actually, yeah, I remember something about 200 or something like that games. Uh, Meander Mix is there 87 on BGG. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's insane. Uh, Telemachus later. Okay, guys, have a great time. I'll see you. Uh, well, I'll see you in other aspects. Bye.